Hello. This is a brief reading of uh, a book written by my mate Stephen Volk. And if you're a horror fan or if you're a Peter Cushing fan or you like a damn good read, Whitstable is definitely one to pick up. It's come out from Spectral Press and it is a must read. He's kindly said that I can read a little bit of it to you. He couldn't face going outside. He couldn't face placing his bare feet into his cold, hard slippers. He couldn't face sitting up. He couldn't even face opening his eyes. To what? The day. Another day without Helen in it. Another day without the sun shining. For a moment or two, before being fully awake, he imagined himself married and happy. The luckiest man on earth. Then pictured himself seeing her for the first time outside the stage door of the Theatre Royal Drury Lane. She, a shining star, who said a platypus looked like an animal hot water bottle. He, in his vagabond corduroys battered suitcase, hands like a dura drawing, breath of cigarettes and lavender. Then a sleep receded, like the waves outside the window. He felt that dreadful, dreaded knot in his stomach, as the awareness of her no longer being there, or her non-presence, the awful sick emptiness, rose up again from the depths. The sun was gone. He might as well lie there, with his eyes shut, because when his eyes opened, what was there but darkness? Habitually, he'd rise with the light, drink tea, take in the sea view from his balcony, listen to the wireless, and sometimes go for a swim. He did none of those things. They seemed to him to be activities another person undertook in a different lifetime. Life. Time. He could no more picture doing them now than he could see himself walking on the moon. The simplest of tasks, the very idea of them, seemed mountainous, impossible. Yet, it was impossible also to lie there like a dead person, greatly as it appealed to do so. It was something of which he knew his darling would so disapprove. Her reprimanded virtually rang in his ears, and it was that that roused him to get up rather than any will of his own. His will was only to... But he didn't even have the strength for that. She was his strength, and she was gone. Helen. Oh, Helen. Even as he sat hunched on the editor of the bed, the burden of his loss weighed on his skinny frame. He had no choice but to let the tears flow with the same cruel predictability as his dream. Afterwards, weaker still, he finally rose, wiping his eyes with now damp knuckles, wrapping his dressing gown over baggy pyjamas, and sh shambling like something lost and misbegotten towards the landing. A thin slat shone between the still-drawn curtains onto the bedroom wallpaper. He left the room with them unopened, not yet ready to let in the light. A half-full milk bottle sat on the kitchen table, and the smell hit him as soon as it entered. The sink was filled to the brim, but he poured the rancid liquid in anyway, not caring that it coated a mound of dirty plates, cups, saucers and cutlery with a viscous white scum. He opened the refrigerator, but it was empty. He hoped the milk would have left a pint on the doorstep. He hated his tea black. Then he remembered why he had no groceries. Joyce, he did it. Joyce, his secretary, did everything for Sir. He pictured again the hurt in her eyes when he told her on the telephone she would not be needed for the foreseeable future, that she wouldn't need to come to check that he was all right, because he was all right. He'd said he needed to be left alone, knowing that one thing he didn't want was to be left alone. But it was not the way God had planned it. Nasty God. Nasty, nasty God. He shut the fridge. He didn't want the food anyway. What was the point? Food only kept one alive. And what was the point of that? Sitting, eating, alone, in silence. What was the point of that? He put on the kettle. Tea was all he could stomach. The calendar hung facing the wall, just the way he left it. The letterbox banged, startling him shortly followed by a knock on the wood. It was Julian, the postman, he thought, probably wanting to give his condolences in person. He held his breath and had an impulse to hide. Instead, he kept so still.